In this video tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create lush valleys, waterfalls, and waterways with Gaia. We will do this starting from a brand new project and we'll be creating a setup that can generate landscapes like the one seen here. To begin, I'll create a blank scene and I'll be using Gaia version 1.3.2 Professional, but any older or newer version will work just fine. One important thing before you begin is to always get some reference of the landscapes you're trying to create. It doesn't have to be something that you follow exactly, but some inspiration or reference on the side is always beneficial when you're creating these environments. For this video, it was a request to make some lush valleys and kind of more Icelandic looking landscape, so I got some references of Iceland and I found that there's a lot of waterfalls and waterways in Iceland as well. So I thought that would be an interesting challenge to approach in Gaia. Now before I start creating anything, I'm going to do one more thing just to keep my organization a bit cleaner and that's going to be to separate what I do broken up into different node graphs. I'm going to take this graph here and I'm going to right click on it and rename it and call it 3D and also right click and give it the color yellow. And in here, I'll do all the shaping and the height map creation of my terrain. And then I'll add another graph here by clicking on this plus, and I'm gonna call it 2D. And in here, I'll be doing all the coloring and all the texturization of the terrain. So I'm just breaking it up into two different graphs, 3D and 2D, just to force a little bit of organization. You can use these graphs in much better ways to organize, but at least this way, I'm not creating a giant mess from the start and I start to break things up and keep them a bit more organized. So to begin, I'm going to start with the mountains node. So I'm just going to go in here and grab mountain, mountains, whatever you want to call it, but it's mountain node and I'll preview that and I'll be working at half K resolution just so it's quick, but we'll dial in some settings here and play around with the seed. You want to get something that feels uh, like what you think is, is going to work pretty well. So something like this is not too bad and I'll dial in the scale, maybe a bit higher and height definitely higher, well lower, but I'm going to turn on bulky. So that's going to make it ton, a ton higher. And that seems to be pretty good. And maybe the seed will just offset a bit more 88, 782, I don't know, vary it up a bit, see how that works. Yeah, that kind of works. So stick with that. And then maybe what we'll do is add a fractal terraces to add some stepping to this. I want to just get a lot of interesting details and then I'll worry about adding finer details. So I just want to get big, large scale shapes that are nicely broken up. And to do that, fractal terraces is going to give me a nice kind of fractured edge that feels very rocky. So if I add fractal terraces in, you can see what it does here. And I can change the settings, spacing, Maybe make it smaller, maybe make less octaves, maybe make more intensity, 100% shape, I don't know, 95% makes it super rigid. Great. That's something that looks pretty cool. So we, after that, we can start blending it with other things. So I go and take a combine, take this, combine it, set it to add 90% out of 100%. We'll see what we add it with, but maybe we'll add it with like a ridge that I'll add a bunch of random details. I think a uh, ridge, where do we got our ridge node? Ridge, 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 ridge. Um, there it is. So, not range, but ridge. And I can just search it too, but just in case you're wanting to look for it here, um, I should be seeing it. My just there it is, ridge. Cool. And I'll take that. Let's preview it. Uh, a bit crazy. Maybe we need to change some of those shapes. The scale. Let's make it smaller. Smaller scale ridges. Height. Maybe a bit less. Definition. Maybe a bit more. Break it up a bit more. Seed. I don't know. What can we do here? That kind of works. If we try other values, random values. Okay, cool. Put that in as our input too. Combine those together. Not too bad. Let's look at our fractal terraces. I think this looks okay. 
but maybe I'll, I'll randomize that a little bit as well. Let's just see what we can do in here. Some random numbers, see if we make much of a difference. Good enough. I'll maybe have to change it a bit later, but let's see. Let's see what path this goes down. And then we'll take an aperture node. So that's just going to nuke all these details. And I use this approach a lot. I add an aperture node and it's very useful because you can kind of resurface your terrain to something a bit more simplified and then add details back. So I'll take this aperture node. See how it makes things lumpy? You know, this iterations amount, I have it set to expand and disk. You can do different things like ring, sobel, diamond, different shapes. I'm going to do disk, expand, maybe six. Blurs everything up a bunch and looks useless. But now I've taken away all those crazy ridge details, but still have interesting shaping. And then what I can do is resurface this by adding look dev nodes on top. So I'm going to take something like a shatter, shatter the train, and collapses. Maybe set this to 0.25. Seed, maybe I'll, I'll vary this up a bit. I don't know, just some random number, whatever. What does that do? Looks good enough. Then maybe add a rugged, run a rugged node, view that, Not add much, let's see if we can change some of the settings here. Strength, let's make it way higher, 70%. Scale, let's make it less. Octaves, sure, let's leave all that. Let's see what this does. Okay, cut in a bit more shapes. How about density? Maybe we can make it like negative 95. Really big values. Let's just see if we can get some large scale changes in here. And seed, I sometimes just type random numbers into the seed just to see how much it randomly changes. See if I need to explore that a bit further. Yeah, I kind of crushed the whole top of this and added a bunch of breakups. So that's kind of cool. So I'll go with that. And we have a bit of messed up looking terrain, but I like it. We have a lot of detail in here. We just need to take it down a bit. So what I'll do now is add maybe something like a thermal shaper. Connect that up. Softens it out a bit from that to this. Pulls it back a bit. Maybe you need to reduce that. It's too much. Maybe 15% influence. Okay, it takes the edge off, makes it not as crazy. On some of these little spiky areas. That works. And maybe at this point, time to up, up it to 1k so we could see more of those details because I'm starting not able to make out the, the differences of what I'm adding. So let's add that. And this is looking pretty cool. Got a lot of broken rock chunks and things. So now it's time to maybe add some erosion. So I'll go in here, drag an erosion in, connect it up. What settings do we want? Well, I want more erosion, but I want less intensity, less rock softness. So maybe something like 10%, 10%, 15%. Probably have to change these down cutting. I don't usually like for something like this. Inhibition, I'll do 100%, but it won't make much of a difference at all. And volume, sure, a little bit. Sediment removal, so you get some more crevices and cracks, maybe 3%. And seed, I don't know, let's just randomize this thing. Um, apply changes. And see what we get. Okay, not bad. That's a bit of our erosion in here. Kind of works, kind of works. I'm not, not super happy with it, but it's good enough. And now what we can do is maybe on top of this add a bit more chaos. I'm going to use a crumble node. Throw a crumble on here. What's that do? There we go. Jabs in a bunch of areas to make more rigid shapes. That to that. That's kind of cool. So what can we do with our crumble node? Maybe what I'll do is make it more stronger. And that really pushes it in. But maybe it's getting a bit too steep in height. 
So I could take my vertical amount and it's maybe make it negative 35 to kind of counter that. So it's a bit softer now. And that's okay. I want now water flows in here. I'm starting to see it'd be cool if water's like pouring down here and flowing over with waterfalls into these areas. So maybe what we'll do is we'll add a rivers node now. Time to get some water into here. So I'll pop in a rivers node, input that, preview it. What do we got? Rivers, cool. Let's uh, make that more water, more width. As big of a river we can get. Let's see if it, it does what I'm imagining. And it's, it's not. It's not doing what I'm imagining. So this is a problem that we run into. You have something in your head that you want done, but the tool is not doing what I want. I want bigger, thicker rivers all over the place here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the depth to zero, take down cutting to zero, so it's not cutting into my terrain at all, that depth or down cutting. And what I will do is take that rivers node and use it as a mask. So I'm going to take this rivers node, I'm going to use a flow node if I can find where this is. Flow, there we go. And connect my rivers to flow, preview flow. Okay, this is kind of cool, but don't want tertiary. I'm going to do primary, uh, maybe 50% rainfall apply. Now I get these big shapes. That's what I want pocket of water flows down like a waterfall and settles down here. So that's looking a bit better. So maybe something like that is what I'll go with. So I'll take this flow node and I'll cut this into my terrain. So I'll take a combine and you're probably wondering what am I doing? And sometimes I wonder that as well, but I'm going to take this crumble, take the flow, secondary, subtract it, set to subtract. That's too steep of subtraction, so I'll set it to like 1%. And now it's cutting into the terrain with that shape that I have for my flow node, which is bigger than our reverse node. So that's, that's working better. So I'll do that. But I maybe need to adjust this flow map or, or node a bit better. So what I'll end up doing is creating a effects node here. Connect my flow node to that. Connect that to this combine. And on the effects node, I'll do a clip. I'll set the minimum amount to maybe 8% maximum amount to 25%. So what it does is it clamps that and then I'll set this to be the mask. It's going to be really weak, which works in my favor because then I can, you know, 1% is not super steep anymore. If I go higher, it's a bit more steep, but it just gives me a bit better control. I don't want it to dip in like a ton of meters. So 1% works good. And now I get a faint cut out of where those areas are, where the water is flowing. And that works for me. I think that's pretty good. Now, what I want to do is add some more detail into this terrain, especially area where the water is flowing. So around here, I want like lots of rock type details and shapes. So maybe we can start to add that type of stuff in. And I could play with this rainfall as well. What does 100% rainfall look like? That might look a bit more interesting. There's 50%. So maybe I'll come back and adjust that later, but leave it for now. But on this combine, I'm going to add one more combine and add some rocky details around those river areas. So I'll connect it to a new combine, take this combine, connect it to some rock noise or something. So and we have some rock noise in here. There is rock noise, which adds a ton of fine rocky noise like this. So that's good. Add that on top. So on this next combine, Set it to add. How much percent? Maybe like 80%. How's that look? Crazy. Now I just want to mask it out around the water areas. So how can I mask it out around the water areas? Well, I can take this effects here. 
a blur to expand it around the water area. So I'll blur it by maybe three power, set it to log to brighten it. There we go, or equalize either one. And there we go. Now what we can do is take that and do another combine. Put this blur in the first slot. Second slot, we'll take this effects node, create another effects node. On this effects node, preview it and set it to equalize with so just that water area, super sharp. Then we're taking our blurred amount and we're gonna minus that other area. So on this combine, we'll set it to subtract 100%. And now we get a cutout of only the areas around the water that fade off. And we'll use that as our mask for our rock noise. And now what we end up with is rock noise only being added around the edges of our water. And that works pretty well, I think. And on this combine, maybe I could brighten that up. We'll click log, makes it brighter. Let's see how that looks. There we go. That's what I want. Those rocky details being added around the edge of our water. So after that, we've pretty much wrapped the 3D shaping. So how do I get this into our 2D graph over here? Well, what I'm going to do is at the very end, I'm going to create a choke point. Choke points is going to be like a placeholder. So if I change any of these nodes, I just have to reconnect it up to this and no other work is needed. So it's a bit of a safety thing. Uh, so I'm just going to connect this up to the choke point. I'm going to rename the choke point as what I want this to be called. So I'm just going to call it 3D height. So in the 2D graph, we know what this is. And then I'm going to take the output and set it as a portal or make portal. And that will create an output with this name of the choke point called 3D height. And I'll be able to access that in our 2D graph. So if I go over to the 2D graph, what I can do to cleanly import this, you don't have to do this, but I usually do this, is create another choke point and drag the left side out, go to portals. There it is, my 3D height. And now we see 3D height being imported into here and we can continue our graph. So for our graph here, we need to do our coloring of this terrain. So how can I color this thing in a nice way? Well, I don't know, but we'll start off with maybe a texture node, maybe a protrusion node to get the peaks of rocks, connect those both up, see what happens when we do that. So we got our texture node and work with a little bit of space. I always crunch everything together, but it's a bad habit. Leave a lot of range in between your nodes or a lot of distance in between them. So you can easily add nodes, remove nodes, and not have to be fighting with these small cramped areas. So texture, what do we get? Preview it, that looks pretty cool. Protrusion, what do we get? Get the tips of the rocks, that's pretty cool. Great. Let's connect those both up to sat maps or satellite maps. I'll go in here, sat map, sat map, connect, connect. Start off with the first one. How do we want to color this terrain? Well, grass, we want grassy valleys and stuff. So I'm going to go in here. I'll scroll through here. No real method to it. I'm just going to scroll and look for something that catches my eye. I usually start at the bottom and just scan my way down. Hey, number 13, that looks good. Now we got our grass. What about the rocks? Let's go to the rocks, take a look. Again, start at the beginning, scroll our way down. Do we see anything that catches our eye? I don't know. Hey, this one looks pretty good, 150. Take our 150, that looks all right. I don't like how those colors are sitting on there so I could play around with the bias a bit. Let's kind of step it around, see what looks good. That's maybe a bit better. So I'll stick with that for now. We'll take a combine, combine these two together. So go all the way over here, grab another combine node, input, secondary input. What's our mask? We want to blend the grass and the rock based on maybe slope, steep areas of rock, or gradually sloped areas are going to be grass. So I'll take this combine and then create a slope mask. So I'll go in here and look for where that is, slope. 
Take that, connect it to our 3D height. How do we want this? What's the minimum slope for rock? Maybe 50 degrees. Maxima, maybe 70. Fall off, maybe 20. Connect that up. View our combine. Set it to blend 100%. Hey, not too bad. That works. Works for me. That looks like rock and grass. So, no complaints there. I'll stick with that. So what's the next thing we do? We got our rock and grass added. Well, let's add another combine and add maybe what happens next. Well, if I think about this terrain, I can find this combine. There it is. You have your rock, you have your grass, but in between these big rock chunks, probably smaller little bits of gravel and rock and dust and sand and whatever pile up in between the crevices and stuff. So let's add that in for a bit more detail. So I'll create another combine down here. And on this combine, I'll add a sat map again. Go on down in here, grab a sat map, connect that up to the secondary input, connect this sat map to our texture again, just to reuse that. And what do we want to create for that sat map? I don't know. We'll just scroll through here and take a look at what catches our eye. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Hey, this looks pretty cool. Let's click on that and preview it. It's not too bad. Maybe the bias again, I don't really like. Change this around, maybe negative 50%. Eh, I'll live with it maybe. And we'll connect that up to our combine here. Now we just need a mask for this. Condense. Why am I condensing this? Well, I'll. Add a mask for this combine, so how can we mask the crevices in between things? Well, maybe an occlusion. Maybe an occlusion mask would work. So connect that to my 3D. Let's preview it. Looks like this. Not what I want. Let's see if we equalize it and invert it. Hey, now we have like a crevice and kind of cracks type of mask. So I'm going to add that into the mask for my combine. Now we got our rock, our grass, and our sand. Not bad. You could fine tune that stuff a bit more, but I'll I'll leave it for now. And blend should be a hundred percent. See that? That's that's kind of working. I'll live with it. So that's that's not too bad. So now what we'll maybe do. And you know what? This is actually bothering me. It's a bit too bright. I'm going to go to the sat map here and I'm going to do a cheat. Apply hue, saturation, luminance. I'm going to bring the saturation down to 50% and bring the brightness down to maybe 65% just to make it a bit darker. And I think that looks a little bit better. I'm going to go with that. So there we go. Not as bright anymore. So now if we want to start working on our waterways or riverways. Uh, that's maybe the next thing I want to start to take a look at. So we need a mask for those water areas. So I'm going to go back to my 3D graph. And I'll take this effects node here, because that had a mask of our waterways. So I'm going to take a choke point again, rename it. River mask, connect it to our water mask that we have here. Whoops. There we go. And make a portal. That's it. That's all we do. Go back to our 2D, create another choke point to import that. Drag it out. Portals. I want my river mask. Now I got it. So now we got a river mask. So what do we do with that river mask? Well, I'm going to take it, I'm going to blur it so we can get areas around that river area. Kind of like what we've already done before, but I'll do it again. I'll blur it by a small amount, just one. And I'll set it to log and equalize so it just pushes that mask much more contrasted. So now I get quite a big area around those waterways. And I want to take a rock map. So if I go in here and look, 
Do a rock map. Connect that up to my 3D. And then the mask to my blur here. So it's only going to create those rock details in these riverway areas like that. Could probably play around with that rock map, but I'll leave that to final touches and you can dial it in at the end. We're not creating a perfect train here. We're just creating something that gets us kind of the, the broad strokes and the base of it done. So now I need to add this rocky detail on top. So I'm going to do another combine. So go in here, add another combine. First input is the combine we had previously. Second input is going to be a new sat map node I'm going to create. And mask is going to be our rock map. What does the sat map connect to? I don't know. Let's reuse our text here for now. And sat map, what is it going to be? I have no idea. Let's just scroll through here. What catches our eye? 62? How's that look? Kind of greenish, about 65. That's kind of cool. It's kind of rocky. Uh, too bright though, so maybe go in here, Lumiance, bring it down halfway, 0.5. That's a bit better. Let's see what this looks like. Combine, blend, but 100%. Okay, so that's kind of rock map that's what's looking like not bad but what about over here it's not bad but i'm not really sure if i'm liking what this rock map is doing or if it's just not not detailed enough. I wonder if we go higher resolution, might be able to see a bit better. But it's not the best. I might have to come back to this and adjust it, but we can stick with that for now. See what we end up getting. So I'll kind of leave that for now. And if it ends up being a problem, we'll, we'll come back to it. Get this blur one more time. That's pretty good. Why aren't we getting coloring that far out? Figure out here. It's a little bit too, too dark. So maybe I have to bring this density down or up. Let's see. Up, up is better. So let me bring that density up a bit. But we can dial that in later. So I'll leave that for now. So now we got a bit of our, our kind of waterway areas dialing in it. We're, we're kind of dialing in the color for the edges of where those rocks are. And the next thing we're going to want to do is get some of our watery details in here. We got like our, our rocky details, but what if we want to get more of our, our watery kind of details? So I'm going to go here and add another combine. So pop in another combine, primary input. Okay, secondary input, it's going to go to our water color. But for that, we need a mask for our water areas. We'll take our river mask. I want to connect it to a, a FX map, FX node or whatever. I'm going to call it in case we have to do some adjustments, but also just so I can control the node graph a bit better, make it look a bit more organized and connect it to our mask. And this gives us the mask of our waterways. And what we'll end up doing now is for the coloring of our waterway areas, I will go here to our combine. Okay, right now it's like dark. I will take a sat map. Connect that to my secondary input. Connect the sat map to velocity node, which will give us a nice kind of look of motion and some just more interesting detail. Like if we connect this velocity node to our 3D terrain and I preview it, a lot of cool details. And again, we, we could adjust this, but I'm just going to roll with it and see what happens. 
connect that to our sat map. Sat map, again, what color do we want? I don't know. Let's look at blue. It's supposed to be water. Number five. Let's trim this. The waterway areas, I'm, I'm dialing in more of the sand or the sleet or what's below the actual water surface, kind of like the base of those waterways. And I'll do something like this, maybe. A bit more range. And then do like a brightness adjustment. They make it darker, negative 20 brightness, or contrast. 25 is too much, maybe 20. We'll have to play around with this, really. I don't know what I'm doing here. But let's give that a try, see what it looks like. It's actually not as bad as I thought. So we could roll with that and go with that. It's all right. So I'll stick with that. Now what do we do? Well, now it's time to add our actual water on top. So what I'm going to end up doing, or kind of add like our highlights to our water that'll make this look a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do from here is add another combine. What else was I really going to say? Of course we have to add another combine. So another combine connect the combine before and inception time we go from one combine to another combine so we'll do another combine because i have to create the mask and the mask has to just get the waterway areas but i want to get certain details i don't want to get the same thing i want to get steep areas and kind of like these high turbulent flows to make it look like there's white water or fast moving water so I'm going to take the secondary combine to build a bit more of a detailed mask. And in there, I'm going to take our velocity. So I'm going to get velocity node again. Here's my velocity. See? So I'll connect that to the second input. And I'll connect it to a flows. Flow. And the flow I'm going to connect main input to our 3D height, the mask to our river mask, and then what can I do with that flow? Preview it. Let's see what we get. Get that. That's tertiary. Rainfall 20, no way, let's do 100%. There we go, that's a little bit better. Maybe quality one of one detail just to really get some fine shapes in there, that's a bit better. And not bright enough, so I'm going to connect this to a effects node, set that effects node to equalize, turn on shaper to get some sharper details, maybe negative 25%. What does that give us? There we go, some sharper details. 20, negative 25. Didn't make as much of a difference as I'd, as I'd hope, but that's all right. And connect that to our velocity. Also connect that O and flow. If you're using multiple, if you have multiple things turned on here, be careful. Um, because the output shouldn't matter right now. I only have one turned on. If you have multiple turned on, you have to choose which one you want or all of them combined. I might play around with this a bit more later. I'm not sure if I like the way these flows are looking, but let's give that a try. So from our flow to our effects, to our velocity, and into our combine, and set this combine to be probably add let's see what happens here we want to take this that's this we add those two together at a hundred percent that gives us nice details so sure do that take that as our mask for our final combine here 
and then we just need color. So the color that we're going to use is something bright, something like white water or fast moving water. So I'm going to go in here and take a sat map, connect it to my effects like that. And what do we set the sat map to? I have no idea again. We're just going to have to look in here. Blue because it's water. What looks good? I don't know. Try this. Choose one. Preview it. Clip this. So again, this is where it comes in to just having to play around with things. I'll leave that up to you. I don't want to extend this video too long, so I'm going to go in here. My hue saturation and just make it brighter like that. That's going to work for now, but you can choose something better. So what does this give us? It's all working correctly. Looking a little bit odd here. Take a look at our combine. Kind of working on one side there but might need a bit more adjustment, but it's not bad. We got our terrain, we got our rock, we got our kind of more dusty sand type stuff, and then our waterways and this white water starting to be produced, which isn't too bad. So could be better, but could also be worse. So not, not too bad. This kind of gets us a bit of our, our terrain here. And I'm going to set this to, to a higher resolution now, and then we'll take a look at doing kind of final touches and what could be done. But this is kind of a base setup for creating some nice terrain. So this is what I'm getting with our maps at 2K. And I did some adjustments, some final touches, and I'm going to go over what I changed uh, to add those in. But really, it just comes down to just organizing your graph and adjusting things like your sat maps and things to dial in a little bit better. But the main thing I noticed here is our flow node was connected with the output. Um, if you're using you know, multiple things, primary, secondary, tertiary, it's important to only plug in the mask that you want. If you only have one, then it doesn't matter. You can just take the full output. Um, here, I played around with this a little bit. And I'm using the tertiary node. And from that, I was able to get some nice details like this, kind of similar to what we had. Uh, but the map looks quite a bit different right now because I went back to our 3D graph, back to the mountain, fractal terraces, then did a soft clip, then did a combine, and then our aperture and, and all that other stuff. Otherwise, everything else is mostly the same. And at the very end, I added a arboreal node. What that's going to do is add all these little trees or spikes. I set it to shrubs so we get these low growing kind of lumps on our train. It's more for presentation. And I pretty much used that to add a bit more detail and have some foliage growing around. And I just added that right onto the end here and then reconnected up to my, my choke points. And then in our 2D network, um, I spend a bit more time on the, the coloring, the sat maps. Like I was looking at them and, you know, used a different one here, uh, clipped a different range and found that that worked a little bit better. And then added that kind of white water detail on top. And then at the very end here, again, I have a choke point that says tree mask. I, I created a choke point here that you'll see that is the tree mask. And I actually didn't use a choke point for the river flows. I just outputted it directly here from this effects node. So I made that adjustment. And this way I can get the tree mask from the arboreal node and then use that in my 2D network. Just do some coloring on those trees, add them back in on top of everything, and give me those details. And you can see how this velocity node here 
and I preview it. I, I dialed it in to get some of those kind of areas that are kind of a little bit more broken up. And when you add that with the combine, adding in our flow map stuff, I made sure we got a good strong section of brightness where the steep areas are. And that gives me the illusion of these little waterfalls. So this ends up being my final network here. And if we just take a look at this, I also added a normal map node here for when you export things, it'll just give you nice normal details, uh, but has no use in the network for what we're looking at now. But if we go from top to bottom, review all those things we did, we first started off with our coloring of our mountain rocks and our grass areas. Then we added that dirt or soil in the crevices. Then we added our rocky and waterway areas. There they are. And then we add our water on top. And then we add our water highlights. And then we add our arboreal growth of trees, the coloring for it. And that's pretty much it. So that's what I've done here to create this same network setup, just a bit more time spent on dialing in some of those nodes. Primarily it has to do with the, the water and these, these rocky areas here. You can see how much more these sit in. So I went in here and took these nodes, some adjustments, you know, adjusted the hue a little bit, whatever I needed to do to make it feel a bit more interesting and then add those details all back together. And again, this is just 2K, but at 4K, it looked pretty good. And I found out the viewport view here was a little bit dark for my liking. So I went here as well and just set the um, sun intensity a bit higher. I don't think it's updating. I don't know why those numbers went back. Um, but setting these a bit higher, or actually, I think they were correct. I just don't like how dark it is by default, so usually I'll bump this up a bit. Ambient intensity to sun intensity to 1.25 or 1.5. And that also just makes it, I find, a little bit easier to look at. But it's really up to you. It's just preview settings. But I found that this kind of fits a bit more with how I'd light it. Uh, so that's something you can adjust as well. And I always change this light around the terrain as I'm making my terrains. I didn't do that too much in this video, but it's usually something that I do just to make sure I get the feel of the, the shapes a bit better. You can also just rotate around and that works as well. But I find that changing that light source direction can be really beneficial. So I'll set this to be 4K and we'll take one last look at it. So here's the final terrain at 4K resolution. And we can take a look at the 2D view as well and see all those details and nice rocky edges and things that we're getting. This could be improved even further, but this gives you a good start to building some of these terrains in Gaia and trying out something new and hopefully you learned a few new approaches to using nodes, like using that aperture node, I find to be pretty useful uh, for just getting interesting shapes and then being able to add look dev nodes on top and then erosion to kind of resurface the details on it. So hopefully that is something that you'll find as well uh, useful when making different landscapes and, and terrains. But this kind of ends up being our final terrain for this video. And if you are part of the Patreon, you'll get access to this uh, Gaia file as well as the PDF that goes over all the steps of making these terrains that we see in this video and producing kind of what we saw uh, with our result from this video as well. So all the steps are kind of recorded in this uh, PDF that you can go through and review as well. So if you're part of the Patreon, you'll get access to that. But if you've liked this video and you want more content, let me know in the comments below what kind of content you want to see and make sure to like and subscribe so you're alerted to new videos that will be coming out shortly.